Hi, my name is Brian Sabini. I'm a University of Wyoming Extension Educator for Sustainable Management of Rangeland Resources. I currently work in Northeast Wyoming, and today we're actually going to be talking about weeds and their presence and impacts in rangeland ecosystems. Weeds affect almost all types of rangeland ecosystems, whether they're wet or dry. A good starting point when discussing weeds and rangelands is determining what a weed is. There are many definitions floating around, but for our purpose we will define a weed as a plant that interferes with human activities and priorities and therefore becomes unwanted. These plants are often difficult to remove completely from our rangeland systems. We have weeds that are both native and non-native. For most people it is understood what particular weeds are undesired and the negative effects they pose to wildlife, livestock, and ecosystem functions. Some of the major negative effects weeds present are decreased forage availability to wildlife and livestock, unsuitable nesting or hiding cover for wildlife, and changes in water resources, desired plant communities, and soil characteristics. We also hear the term monoculture related to weed management. A monoculture is a plant community that only has one plant species. A monoculture is usually not what we want in our rangeland ecosystems because of the decrease in plant diversity. The lack of diversity leads to the problems just stated. Many of these notorious plants that are capable of forming a monoculture get termed noxious because of their persistence and overabundance. Now let's look a little deeper into why we have these unwanted plants and why they are so dang hard to get rid of. Here's a list of some common thoughts on why weeds are so successful. First, most weeds that are common in rangelands have immigrated to the United States from climates in Europe and Asia that are similar to that of Wyoming. Some of these weeds immigrated on accident and others were on purpose. Once these plants have made it across the big pond, you know, the Atlantic Ocean, they left behind their natural enemies and then entered a new world where they were free to grow and reproduce as they please. Second, many of these plants are highly competitive, meaning they have the ability to outcompete other plants for water or essential nutrients. Some weeds may even fill a niche in our rangelands that is not occupied by other plants. The niche a weed is able to occupy is a particular environmental factor that a different plant or plants does not currently occupy. This niche may include the ability to grow at a different time of year, establish in poor soils, or high resistance and resilience when exposed to human or natural disturbances. These disturbances include wildfire, erosion, human soil disturbances, and stressful environmental factors such as long-term drought. Third, it is suggested that some of the problem weeds have the ability to produce chemicals that negatively affect other plants. These chemicals are called alleochemicals. While not all weeds use alleochemicals, some plants, like those in the knapweed family, are suggested to use this competitive tactic. Finally, some weeds are extremely efficient at spreading and moving around the range to start new plants and populations. These strategies include light and feathery seeds that can be blown in the air, seeds that stick to animal hair or human clothing, seeds that are actually shot away from the plant, or plant roots that can start new plants if broken and moved. I don't know about you, but it seems to me weeds have many traits that allow them to become competitive. I think it is helpful to take a closer look at a common range weed to help tie together all of the concepts I have just laid out. Canada thistle is a great example of a common range weed in Wyoming that showcases many of these competitive characteristics. Canada thistle is an introduced plant from Europe and Asia that occupies many rangeland ecosystems. Usually found in wetter areas or in areas with high precipitation, Canada thistle can completely take over an area and turn the site into a near monoculture. It is thought to be dominant for several reasons. First, as you might guess, this weed did not have any of its natural biological enemies present when it set foot in North America. Biological controls have since been set loose and have had some control. Second, Canada thistle has an extremely high growth rate and is very competitive for essential nutrients. Once established in a suitable area, it does not take long to spread and immediately start competing with desired plants for nutrients. Third, it has an extensive root system that can sprout from deep within the soil profile. These roots, are also known as rhizomes, also have the ability to re-sprout if chopped and moved to a new soil. 
The seeds of Canada thistle are also well adapted for traveling long distances on windy Wyoming days. Whew. As you can see from the example of Canada thistle, our rangelands and rangeland plants are constantly facing competition from new and current weeds. Doing your part to keep weeds from spreading is an important part of weed management for rangelands in Wyoming. So I hope this video helps explain what weeds are, why they persist, and the impacts they have on our rangeland ecosystems. Thanks for listening.